Hi there, it's Sharon Waxman. I'm the editor-in-chief of The Wrap, and I'm here at The Wrap Studios at the Toronto International Film Festival. Really happy to welcome the directors and some of the subjects of Something in the Water, a new documentary. Uh, Ellen, I'll start with you. Uh, you, you what, what made you decide to make this film? You're from Canada. Yes. Yeah, I'm uh, originally from the province of Nova Scotia, from Halifax, uh, born and raised, graduated high school there, and all my family is still there. And um, I started learning more and more about this issue of environmental racism in, in Nova Scotia. And uh, I had no idea about a lot of these issues. And I spent an enormous amount of my childhood in Shelburne, Nova Scotia, for example, where Louise's community is. Um, t- it's 20 minutes away from where a lot of my family is from. And I'd go to Picto uh, all the time when I was a kid to play soccer, what have you, you know. Um, and so I immediately wanted to become w- more aware. And I ended up finding Ingrid uh, Ingrid's essential incredible book, There's Something in the Water, and learning more and more and more about these issues, it just felt absolutely just Im- imperative to contact Ingrid to help use the platform and the privilege that I have and, you know, the presence, I'd say, in Nova Scotia and the kind of uh, to, to to just help get the voices out there. And then, you know, it it evolved from there. That we didn't intend to make a feature film. That wasn't, when we went, that wasn't at all what we were thinking. We did not think it was going to turn into something this um, elaborate. What did you think? You were making a short? or just? We like just a, thought we were going to, because I ended up, through Ingrid, and um, ended up connecting with the grassroots grandmothers and Doreen on, on the phone and others, and we, we were talking about um, just, you know, how we could, strategize together how I'd be able to help or I just wanted to listen and learn and and uh and help in the ways um that I could and we discussed cameras and it seemed like that was a good idea come take some cameras put it online uh, put the footage online etc and it just continued it continued Ian read Ingrid's book in a day and it it started to turn into we need to go make something here um, and wanted to go show multiple examples of the issue in the province. Mm-hmm. But we just thought, you know, oh, there'll be little pieces that we put online to help get the word out there. Mm-hmm. Well, it is really uh, a fascinating concept, the idea of environmental racism. It's something, you know, you, re- you read the phrase or you see the phrase, say, in, the, you know, just a description of the film, and you think it's a... That's a, a, a new catchphrase, but when it's depicted to you and it's explained to you, it really makes a lot of sense. So, Ingrid, explain what that means. Uh, environmental racism is the disproportionate location or siting of toxic industries in communities of color, indigenous communities, and the working poor. Uh, so it refers to the tendency for government to cite uh, hazardous industries in communities that can't fight back communities that lack economic power, lack political power, and cannot fight back against the siding of these industries. Uh, So very much uh, an intersectional understanding is required in terms of race and culture, socioeconomic status, and rural issues as well, because many of these communities are located in rural areas. Did you start studying this? You started sort of gathering, mapping it out, Gathering facts that would support that argument, or and, and did you, you sort, of, or did you just start sensing anecdotally that there, there was something amiss in sort of the, the outcomes mm-hmm. in, in for, in for, the, for environmental waste? Um, the book was based on my seven-year project uh, on environmental racism. I started a project on environmental racism in uh, Black communities, Indigenous communities. In 2012, it was a project that was kind of handed to me uh, by an activist. So the book is based on, uh, you know, studies in uh, across Canada, studies in Nova Scotia, but also the United States as well. Um, is, so, is this true in the United States as well? Yeah, I mean, one example would be Flint, Michigan. Well, of um, course, you can't you can't see the film and not think of Flint when you're talking mm-hmm. about the water and the mm-hmm. and now Baltimore. Apparently, right. But environmental racism is also about a pattern. It's a, about a pattern. So, you know, I, I say Flint, um, and there are several cases. You've got indigenous communities in the United States, issues around pipeline, just like in Canada, pipelines, just like in Canada. Um, another case is uh, near Louisiana. It's called Cancer Alley. 
um, a predominantly black community, but they call it Cancer Alley because there are high rates of cancer because they're near hazardous industries. So environmental racism is about a pattern, a patterning, and it's historical. It's rooted and embedded uh, in historical inequities. Um, and it's about the lack of response to, you know, by government uh, to act on uh, the siting of these industries in communities of color, indigenous communities.